All right, in this session, we are going to talk about connecting to a REPL. When you first start your project, you want to connect to something that you can do interactive programming with. Um, if you're uh, if you used to closure, you'll do just do lane REPL. If you use uh, lining in or boot REPL, uh, in case you use boot. When you're in Emacs, you want your Emacs to connect to that. Um, so let's take a look at what is possible within Emacs. Uh, first thing to notice when we have this, uh, I created the project uh, and uh, when you open up Emacs, you see that there is a cider and it says um, it has a connection. It has possibilities to start a REPL or connect to a REPL uh, or start a closure REPL and a closure script REPL. Um, the first one, is what you would normally do. You don't start your own REPL, you just use Emacs to start it. If you have a closure and closure script project, in case you're following along with my project Trivium, you will have both. Uh, you would use the uh, start a closure REPL or uh, and start a closure script REPL, which is bound to control C meta J, uh, capital J. Um, but for this uh, small project that I created, I'll just use start a REPL. If you already have a REPL, for instance, a running instance or a production machine, you can always use connect to a REPL and then specify the connection details that you get from running lane REPL. It will tell you it's running at this port. You just put it in and Emacs will talk to that. So for now, we will just use start a REPL and you will see that uh, Emacs or CIDR in particular will uh, run a uh, REPL for you. While that is loading, uh, please note that uh, on my website, you will find all this information. But uh, more importantly, CIDR comes with documentation. And basically we are dealing with the, uh, using the REPL um, uh, chapter of the manual. So I will uh, close this for now and Let's maximize the frame. There we go. All right. Uh, so we now have a REPL uh, right here. Uh, I just realized that my face will probably be on the command log buffer. So let's move that out of the way. Um, so once you have a REPL, what can you do with it? Well, let's first take a look at how you can see that you are connected by running Ctrl C meta D, uh, CIDR display connection info. You see that uh, we are currently running a closure REPL, uh, productive, that's the project name, uh, localhost, this port, and it has these versions. You could, for instance, run uh, your REPL in a Docker instance with a completely different toolset. Um, so when you're uh, uh, running your uh, system, you might want to change over to your REPL so let's do that by using Ctrl C, Ctrl C and Z. The, um, you see it right here, Ctrl C, Z. Uh, and it moved over to the window that has the REPL. If there is no uh, window, so let's move it right here. It will, uh, no, 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 Ctrl C, Z. It will actually open up a different window with the uh, REPL into it. I don't like that. Let's move that back to here. Uh, REPL, yes, I want that. No, I want the REPL. Productive cider, cider, uh, cider, REPL, productive. There we go. It takes a little while. Uh, as you know, uh, notice I have a very bare uh, Emacs configuration. This is the bare Emacs configuration that I explained in my uh, article on my blog. Um, so it misses all the normal shortcuts that I would use. Um, now, so we have an ability to start a REPL. We can switch to it. Um, let's say we have a function. We call it, we called it add here, right? If we evaluate it, it, uh, it uses it. And we can actually send this code to the REPL itself. And uh, a key binding control C meta P will actually transport the part that we have in our uh, buffer or the, the expression that we're at 
to the um, uh, REPL itself that we can play with it. This becomes really useful in, in the cases that we, um, uh, for instance, are building a function or a, a statement right here and we want to check if it does what we want. So we can just do this. Uh, and it actually moves it there and we know what it will do. And um, if we move uh, this one there, you see it takes the current expression that you're at and moves it into the REPL. Very useful. We can also have the result of uh, an expression moved to the REPL. And uh, that's very useful in case it creates a structure that you want to use and try some stuff on. Uh, for now, it just uh, adds three, which is nothing. So we will leave it at that. Clean it up a little bit. So you saw how you can move stuff to the REPL. Uh, you can evaluate things to the REPL. Um, in this case, we're already in the productive core namespace in our REPL as well, so everything works. But if you're in a different namespace, so let's uh, say for instance, um, I have some test codes uh, and I want to evaluate something from this uh, namespace. Uh, it will fail miserably because the, uh, the REPL is in a different namespace. We can use Ctrl C meta N to switch the namespace of the REPL to the namespace that we are currently working in. So if we go back to core CLJ, we do the same thing and we switch back. Uh, if you are wondering uh, if we would send uh, some code to the REPL once it is in a different namespace than the current one, Ctrl C meta N, uh, it will tell us a big fat error because it is not active in that same namespace. So we need to make sure that in order to have, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, Wait, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a REPL, so it doesn't know what I'm wanting. All right, so now it switched uh, the namespace to uh, the namespace of the current buffer, uh, and it transported uh, the function that we already sent to it uh, there as well. So now it actually works. So having done all that, our REPL window is quite messed up. So we should be able to clear any output of a, a function. Uh, if you see, if you noticed, let's add some more output. If our um, application creates a lot of output, for instance, prints a lot, we might want to uh, clear the output. There is also a possibility to use the interactions here to clear all the output. So clear latest output is what we did just now. We cleared the output of that one command and we can do a clear all the output. We just use the prefix, the control U and do the same key binding and it will clear out the entire REPL and we will have a clear uh, space to work in. So Having used the REPL, we've used all the functions that we can uh, deal with in the REPL. Uh, we are only left with closing them when we're done. Right? There's uh, multiple ways to do this. And normally, uh, if you have only one REPL, you can just use Ctrl C, Ctrl Q, uh, and it will close the REPL that you are uh, using. If you also have a closure script REPL, so you have two REPLs, uh, I recommend that you use the uh, prefix, the control U, and then control C, control Q, or cider quit, I believe that it is. Cider quit. Yeah, cider quit. Um, you use the prefix to close all the REPLs at once. So you do control U, control C, control Q, and we'll ask you, do you want to close all the cider REPLs? Press yes, twice, one for the connections, one for the buffer and you're done. So now you know how to use a REPL. Get started, use it, and close it.
that's it hi thanks for watching uh, i hope you liked it um, if you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up um, if you have not done so already be sure to subscribe to the video right here i think somewhere around there um, it will keep you up to date with all the live sessions it will keep you up to date with other videos that i post if you have never looked at my website i'm highly recommended of course uh, i write about all the things that i do on youtube and beyond it's called www.buildfunthings.com of course the entire channel is called build fun things so luckily it's the same thing i hope you enjoy it thank you for watching goodbye